There are some metal bands out there who were able to release the iconic and genre-defining albums in metal. And then there are others who managed to do that not once, but twice in a row. Yeah, unbelievable. So in this episode, let's take a look at the best back-to-back -back albums in metal and then fight in the comments over this list. Here you go. The oldest two albums on this list are the ones which helped Black Sabbath kick it all off for all of the others. Now, in all honesty, at first I thought I simply had to include the Black Sabbath debut record on it, yet if we're being very honest, it is on Paranoid and then Master of Reality that Black Sabbath were able to release two flawlessly perfect back-to-back -back albums. And this list is set to include only such. When it comes to Judas Priest, this band is entitled to at least three Best Back-to-Back -back Albums nominations, especially for their 70s output, which helped define heavy metal as we know it today. Yet if we're talking about the two absolutely flawless and possibly the strongest outputs in metal overall, not many albums in the genre can even come close to what Judas Priest did on Screaming for Vengeance, followed by the iconic Defenders of the Faith. And here's an interesting thing, as agreed in the community post, the next similar episode I'll do will be all the bands who had a perfect run of not two, but five consecutive albums. And while Judas Priest will make it on this list as well, neither Screaming for Vengeance nor Defenders of the Faith will be included in their perfect five album strike. But for this episode, as Rob Halford himself said, for Priest, nothing can match Vengeance. By the way, real quick, for all Judas Priest fans, you still have a chance of winning the iconic Rob Halford glasses he's worn on the 50th anniversary tour, and you can actually win them by doing a great thing and possibly saving someone's life. So if you have no idea what's going on, or if you do but you still haven't participated in this joint fundraiser campaign we have with Judas Priest and Rob Halford, check out the link in the pinned comment. And as Rob Halford himself said, Keep checking out the lads. Uh YouTube channel and Instagram for all the news and let's raise some cash. Oh yeah. In 1993, an English, then still a gothic metal band, Paradise Lost, were able to do something extraordinary, bring the darkest underground metal sound to the mainstream with their iconic album titled very appropriately. And even more so, two years later they managed to, if not top, then at least match its flawlessness with the 1995 Draconian Times, making both of those records pretty much impossible to match in their subgenre of metal. And while I know that I rarely speak of Paradise Lost on the show, I firmly believe it is these two records which shaped the darker side of metal music post mid 90s. Ozzy Osbourne left Black Sabbath in 1979, he had only one way to stay afloat in the world of rock and metal – make his solo debut really stand out, especially compared to the material released by his ex-band members, and that's exactly what he did on Blizzard of Force and possibly even more so on its follow-up Diary of a Madman. On his first solo albums, Ozzy, with the help of the legendary Randy Rhodes, was able to perfectly capture the madness of the early 80s rock scene while still releasing a material which proved to be immortal thanks to Randy's classical music touch. Another possibly unexpected duo on this list is In Flames Colony and its follow-up Clayman. And while these weren't the albums which defined the melodic death metal sound having come roughly 10 years after it emerged in the depth of Gothenburg, both of them became a perfect culmination of then still rather new subgenre of metal and became somewhat of epitomes of how diverse, aggressive and yet melodic and catchy it may sound. <laughs> Like 
Judas Priest, Metallica, at least to me, is definitely entitled to several nominations for the best back-to-back -back albums. Yet most of this channel's viewers know that to me nothing in the Metallica discography and in thrash metal overall can match Ride the Lightning. And given the fact that its follow-up is literally the most iconic thrash metal album of all times, it is simply a no-brainer that the Ride the Lightning Master of Puppets duo simply has to appear on any best back-to-back -back album list. And yes, I said that in order to qualify for this list, the albums have to be flawless. And to me, the entirety of both of these records, including the so-hated Escape and the very underrated Damage Incorporated, are definitely such. By the way, guys, in case you didn't realize, this list is not really made in any particular order of greatness or anything like this. And even more, if it feels weird for you, is because it actually is. It even feels weird for me. As in this list, I had to include two consecutive albums, which, of course, in my very subjective opinion, have absolutely no tracks which feel out of place. And that's why, in all honesty, I personally couldn't really include Rust in Peace and Countdown to Extinction, or Blackout and Love at First Stink, and even have to leave out my favorite Mora hat, although I do consider Overkill, Bomber and Ace of Space to be among the greatest rock and roll albums ever. And instead include even some records which I personally rarely listen to, yet which are flawless from the very beginning until the very end in its respective genres. And I truly hope that you do understand what exactly I mean by it. But anyways. best two consecutive Iron Maiden albums is much tougher of a task than it looks, as especially when it comes to the early band's output, you get a vast diversity in terms of the sound this band produced, each of which finding an audience of its own. And that means that when you try to be even slightly objective, this might even result in you having to drop your favorite Maiden record, which is finally being given justice by the band right now. Yet while well, I'd argue that each two of the consecutive 80s Iron Maiden albums could be considered for this list, none of them would be able to withstand a competition with Number of the Beast and its follow-up, Peace of Mind, when it comes to being the most important for the band and heavy metal overall. But anyways, this is my and I do understand very subjective list of the absolute best back-to-back -back albums in metal. And what about yours? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this short episode, guys, and we'll prevail. Slava Ukraine!